Yeah. See, the other, other thing too, uh, Mr. Dan, they uh, we're on a cul-de-sac and we're on the side of a like a hill. And we have a res we have a reservoir and a park, a private park near us with with trails and 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 uh, picnic areas. It's a gated park. That's all awesome. That and that's all when the tax assessors are giving evaluations, they're considering that the same uh, for your property as the comparables. Okay. Yeah. So that's all great information. That's all in your favor. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Woo. I won. Yeah. Woo <laughs> This is really fantastic that you're at the cul-de-sac and you have those amenities nearby. Again, when you're looking at the comparable properties, let me say this more hypothetically. If I was listing your property at 174 days, I would feel um, not a feeling. I would say that the data would be supporting that, that we're overpriced. Oh, no. Um, significantly. But how do you compare what you're saying like against Zillow? I'm trying to understand something because like if Zillow's seeing a price and it's higher than that? Yes. Yeah, now I get that. Person that decides the value of their property is not Zillow unless if Zillow's going to buy it. Right. So if Zillow believes that your property is valued at a price that seems attractive to you, that'd be fantastic if they were to buy it. Right, I got you. And if they're not to, going to buy it, then um, it, it takes that estimation of the value. I mean, clearly the data supports that Zillow's, up, that Zillow's just wrong. Because if it was accurate, you would have sold it based off of, again, the actual data of seven days, right? It's just, uh, you know, the unfortunate truth of where we're at. Right. Yeah. See, yeah. see yeah. Um, I get caught up in this, like you're saying, in a sense, yeah. because we got people calling us every day, lowballing us. Uh, they want to buy the house at 575, and they don't have to go to the realtor and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. you know, I'm trying not to listen to all that. Because one, I just had a relative told me they just lost their life savings on some scam like this. And I said, well, see, this, this is what the problem is. You know, people are skeptical, including me. And, you know, I hate to say that, but, you know, we're trying to hold out to do the right thing the right way. We're not trying to go that route. So, you know. But it, it's def I mean, 575, I'll buy it tomorrow for 575 a dollar. That's what I'm getting at. But, but I guess they wanted to hold out to do it right because, you know, we, we have to take care of all of our issues here and there, make sure things are done right. And, and they gave us uh, negotiating powers because we don't know the person might come, they might need to have uh, closing costs. We don't know that. They might come back and say, well, no, we want their driveway done. And see, all this kind of stuff would eat all into that. It, I mean, it would get to the point where we're not really making much off of it to move ahead at all. And, I mean, I could just see something like that. Oh, yeah, but then they could just take it as is, fine. But you know, it's just like a used car, you can't make somebody buy something they don't want to buy. They have to want, want the house first. So yeah, I, you I, also I can't. Know, I'm, yeah. You know, yes, forgive me. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. Like I get it. I get it, Otis. I, I feel the same way. I completely get it. That same used car, though, call it a Toyota 19. Oh, that's all we went. I'm just, yeah. Call it a Toyota 2015, right? And if you say, hey, I want to sell this for $90,000, you're probably, it doesn't really matter, right? I guess you're right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Am I suggesting that you have to go as low as 625 or 623 now? Okay, I'm not suggesting that, right? But I think just giving you the data as like more of a benchmark. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other piece of it is, again, I can understand the frustration that you must feel. I get it. That's something that Zillow saying this and this, and, you know, and, and, and we want to get this much for it. And ultimately, um, ultimately, what you really want is to be able to get the most profit. Yeah. Right. And, and not only that, Dan, we, we haven't even had an offer yet. So all the people well, who get the house, they saved it, or people who walk through, we had one person make a nasty comment, say it was all dirty and blah, blah, blah. But you can see for yourself. Yeah. To me, I think that was kind of a plant. I hate to say that because all that did was just made us feel th that we were demor demoralized over it because I said, we put too much effort in it to it be dirty and blah, blah, blah. I said, no, we painted the house and we did the floors. I mean, what, what, I mean, God, is she walking through there with a uh, white gloves on and wiping? I mean, I mean, come on, it was just ridiculous. Well, let so me, let I, me I, share I, this. That was a long time ago, so. I got you. I got you. I, I get the frustration. Let me share this with you, if I may. Okay. You mentioned about the concern of, well, if we were lower the price to really more of the market expectations that maybe somebody may come in, uh, you know, then they nickel and dime you and they ask for repairs, et cetera. That's a possibility. Yet, if you get no offer. Wait for it. 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 Then keep waiting. Wait for it. You have no offer. Yeah. 
you're in a better position to risk like okay maybe we negotiate something after the fact and you can always just say no 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. no 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 i refuse no no right but if you have nothing on the table then there's nothing at all that you that you have in play i love this plan i'm excited to be a part of it let's do it yeah but, but to me i i i'm a firm believer if somebody sees something that they want they would negotiate the price if they don't like it and that hasn't what even happened not even close other than somebody just trying to outright blow ball us you know i get 100 calls a day i have to block them because it's just yeah. ridiculous what about the um that that toyota that's at ninety thousand dollars that's worth 30. yeah now, I'm, I'm being i'm yeah, being yeah. extreme here yeah, I'm being yeah. extreme, so I'm not right. disrespecting you, but right, you right. think that somebody's going to say, oh, that's worth $30,000 and it's listed for ninety. I love that Toyota. Let me make an offer for twenty-seven. What? Yeah, I hear you. But yeah, they, they would be low-balling again, so. I can yeah. say, what's it worth to me versus what it's worth to somebody else in the tax office and our yeah. bills. So all this comes into play. And, you know, we're we're close to our breaking point because originally we put the house on the market for seven around 760 then they got us down to 720 Seven, no, 758 he, okay. just, he just showed us okay then we moved it down to about 720 700 and then somehow 700. well we were supposed to be at 720 and then somehow we got down to 690 so i do know i remember us moving at least three times on the price we kept lowering it lowering it and i said well if it was me i said well i'll see the, the, uh, the, the uh, what's this? The realtor asked us to go one hundred fifteen thousand dollars more lower. I said, "You got to be out your mind." I said, "I said one more, one more employee like that. I'm just gonna have to go to it. somebody else, or I'll sell it myself and just cut out the realtor altogether." Because I said, "The guys, they just started to be ridiculous to me." But well, well, that I'm looking at it's just the I'm looking at what the market is 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 uh, right. suggesting. And what the market's suggesting right now, just you know, uh, you know, based off of what I just went through with you, sure. would be six hundred twenty-three thousand. Um, I think you get more for it than that, um, you know. But I, I don't think that you can get six eighty. And I'm just telling you the truth. You can take that to the bank. Yeah. And I know that that's what you want me to do, even if it's um, an I unfortunate truth. Absorbing all what you're saying. Mm. I, I told my wife I'd just rather wait and see what happens. You know, we just have to tough it out and, you know, just make it make it the way it is. Because like you said, what are you talking about? we do have a, a breaking point for us. What's your, break, what's your breaking point? To me, I don't want, I personally don't want to go below 650. And I got, I got, she knows my reasons why. Because we got, you said the cars, repair bills. 665. Well, 665, whatever that is. But, and I told exclusively because we got to pay the taxes back. Got to pay the federal government back. We got fixed this. <laughs> And the people that we bought the house from, all they threw us over. <laughs> Fix our little house. <laughs> what Kansas does, we agreed that that's what we were going to do. And, you know, that's, has, that has to work in this little ball here. Has what you try to do thus far, mm. has, it, has it worked? Well, I don't, I don't really know the real estate world as a realtor, per se. And all I know is that we have a listing agent and a selling agent. And it's up to the selling agent to sell the houses. So I don't know what the motivating factor is, but like, they, I don't know how many people have come to the house in the last six months. I don't even think it was 20 people. It's only two. Well, 10 people in the last uh, three months, maybe. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another issue. May I propose something to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you mentioned 650 as your breaking point. I think my wife corrected me. She said 65. What would you do if you didn't sell it? Keep it. Um, all right. And then one of the options was to move back into it, but my wife doesn't want to do that. All right. So now let's say you keep it. Does that help you reach those goals that you just mentioned to me? Say it again, please. So I, I heard, you know, and I was, I was really hearing what you were saying to me. I was really listening to it. Yeah, I don't want to do it because my wife doesn't want to do it. But I got I, I got we, we, we opted not to move back into that house, even though we like the house, but she doesn't want to move there because my wife, prior to her, um, you know, she passed away and she said, basically in a nutshell, I want to do something else with you and see what else we can do. That's how we were here. So now that's, that's an issue 
that I just want to sell the house at that point. I'm just trying to do what I think, and I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt anybody else because I don't want nobody else to go through what we went through to get in this house. And, um, you know, that's why the house, we're trying to make it look as good as possible and fix everything that we could possibly fix. But we got to the point where we don't want to do that anymore. We just, we just stopped just short of doing the uh, garage and doing the shed outside. And, and he's doing painting the driveway, sorry. Very different. Let's say you don't sell the house. Uh huh. Those challenges that you were sharing with me, the, what you need the money for, what you want the money for. Yeah, that's what we, we mentioned. Are you able to reach your goals? Not, not at this rate, not unless I retire and find me a new job. <laughs> okay, all right, I got you. All right, so then, so if you keep it, like that's not really, that's not really an option. Well, I mean, I can retire if I want from the job I'm at. I, I can walk away tomorrow, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't walk away unless I got a paper in my hand saying, well, we're going to pay Mr. Perry $200,000 a year. And I wouldn't even think about it twice. I'll be out of there. Is that an unless I had that paper in my hand, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, is that an option to get, to get something? Yeah, it's an option. 200000 a year? Yeah, it's an option. Man, I want to work with you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, that could be an option, right? But absent that, you sell on the, if you keep in the house, doesn't help you achieve your goals. Not as fast. Maybe not this year, but maybe next year. We'll, we'll see. We don't know yet. Okay. Having the house on the market and not selling it doesn't help you achieve your goals. Yeah. So if you're going to ask me how much you suggest I drop the house to, how much are you suggesting? I'm not making a suggestion. I'm sharing okay. with you what the market is suggesting. Got you. All right, what the market is suggesting. Based on what we shared before, and I believe higher than this, would be uh -huh. the six, the 623 and change. If it was me, and I'm gonna, again, this is a hard truth. He ain't lying. I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. Got you. I would listen at 650 if that was me. And if we were talking okay. about a time in the future that you're not, you know, because right now you're listening to another agent, so I'm not soliciting your business. I'm just saying sure, for the future, if I was talking to you to say, hey, let's list this property today, I would propose to you 650. Okay, but let me answer this question. What is the big difference between a listing agent and the selling agent? I mean, shouldn't it be responsibility of the selling agent, not the listing agent that get the household? Or am I misunderstanding something? Well, it's just, um, let's, uh, instead of looking at it from a perspective of like who's responsible for what, well, I, I guess we were going to look at it from that perspective. It, it's who works for who. Okay. As your listing agent, I have a fiduciary care to you, which means that I uh, follow your directions. It remains that I'm loyal to you. means that I tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it. The truth hurts, doesn't it, Habsburg? Oh, sure. Maybe not as much as jumping on a bicycle with a seat missing, but it hurts. Yeah, I go through all the disclosures. I give you, um, uh, I, you know, I remain, everything you share with me remains confidential. Like, but <laughs> don't tell nobody. Go through all the accounting. It'll, I swear to God, I'm smart. The reason will carry the due diligence. So that's the responsibility I have to use to work on your behalf. To, I swear. to find you, to get the property sold. All right. The buyers, from the buyer's agent and the buyer, I owe them a, a fiduciary care to treat them fair and honest, and that's it. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. If you're finding value in the video you're watching today and you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome. If you don't want to subscribe, no worries. But either way, I hope you're enjoying the show and that you're getting value from it. Okay, now the buyer's agent, who you're talking about as a selling agent, owes that same level of uh, care to their buyer, as I just mentioned, the care that I would owe to you. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, who sells the house, it's, it is a, you know, it's a team effort. That's what I like, teamwork. My job as your listing agent is to sell the house. Gotcha. I rely on the selling agents to be able to solicit the selling agents to say, hey, listen, come look at this home. Come on over. This is the one that your clients should have. So it's a little bit of a partnership.